39, Mooresville High School, George Fields. From Greencastle, Indiana, 1939, George Taylor. Greencastle, Indiana, 1939, Don Frazier. Representing her late husband, from Shortridge High School, 1939, Mrs. Fred Crampy. From Southport High School, 1939, John B. Williams. Spencer, Indiana, All-Star in 1940, Oliver J. Troth. 1939, Christmas Addicts, Indianapolis, Howard E. Mitchell. From 1941, Kokomo, Indiana, Carl C. Campbell. School, 1939, representing Wayne E. Payton, Mary Lou Hoffman. From Muncie Burris, 1942, Kenneth Bud Brown. Marion High School, Bill Fowler. From Tipton, Indiana, 1942, James Ertle. 1941, Washington, Indiana, Leroy Hook Mangan. From Lawrence Central, 1942, Jake Luther. 1942, Max Percy. A 1946 All-Star from Flora, Dick Euler. A 1945 Mr. Basketball, Kokomo High School's Tom Schwartz. Jasper High School, 1947, Mike Mickey Sermersheim. 1945, Broad Ripple High School, Ralph Chapman. 1945. From Madison, Indiana, 1949, Mr. Basketball, D. Monroe. From Hope High School, 1945, Bill Shepard. Nineteen fifty from Madison High School, Ted uh, Server. Nineteen forty seven, Evansville Central, Joe Keener. Nineteen fifty from South Bend Central, NT Shine. From Anderson High School, nineteen forty eight, Dick Peck. From 
from Indianapolis Tech, 1952, Mr. Basketball, Joe Sexson. From Jefferson High School in Lafayette, 1948, Mr. Basketball, Robert Bobby Masters. From Richmond, Indiana, 1953, All-Star Lamar Lundy. Nineteen fifty-two, Kokomo High School, Jim Phipps. From Indianapolis, Crispus Attucks High School, Mr. Basketball in nineteen fifty-three, Hallie Bryant. From Terre Haute, Gerstmeyer, 1953, Harley Andrews. Nineteen fifty-five, Mr. Basketball from Gary Roosevelt, Jake Ison. Nineteen fifty-four, Terre Haute, Gerstmeyer, Harley Andrews. From Cecina High School, 1958, Tim McGinley. 1954, Milan, Indiana, Ray Kraft. From Elwood, Indiana, 1958, Daryl McQuitty. 1954, Jeffersonville, Pete Ogremski. From Bainbridge, 1960, Jeff Blue. 1955, Shortridge High School, Jim Lower. Indianapolis Manual High School, Mr. Basketball in 1961, Dick Van Arsdale. Newcastle, Indiana, 1959, Ray Pavey. From Connersville, 1962, Jim Crone. Indianapolis, Washington, Mr. Basketball in 1969, George McGinnis. Nineteen fifty-six, Attucks High School, Oscar Robertson. From Greenfield High School, 1969, Mike Edwards. Nineteen fifty-six, Scottsburg, Indiana, Vern Altemeyer. From Indianapolis, Shortridge, nineteen sixty-nine, Clarence Crane. Nineteen fifty-seven, Dale High School, Roger Kaiser. Nineteen sixty-nine, Anderson High School, Rod Freeman. 1958, Crawfordsville High School, Dick Haslam. From Hammond Tech, 1969, Cornelius White. Huntingburg High School, 1959, Alan Nass. From Warsaw High School, 1976, Indiana's first Miss Basketball, Judy Warren. Nineteen fifty-nine, Shortridge High School, William Bo Crane. Another member of the first girls all-star team, 1976, from Arsenal Technical High School, Benita T. Kennedy Jones II. 
1960, Bedford High School, Mark Denny. A third member from our first team from Portage High School, Donna DeVries Gardner. Tom Van Arstel, Mr. Basketball, 1951. And here's the head coach from the first girls team from North Central High School, Indianapolis, Jane Manus. Jimmy Rail, Mr. Basketball, 1959. The assistant coach in 1976, the head coach of the girls team in 77 from Carmel High School, Sharon Eskew. Madison High School, 1962, Mr. Basketball, Larry Humes. From Norwell in 1977, she was Miss Basketball, Cherry Rosinski. 1965's Mr. Basketball, Indianapolis, Washington High School, Billy Keller. From Scottsburg in 1977, Cindy Piet Cruz. Washington High School, 1965, Ralph Taylor. In 1977, she was the assistant coach. In 1978, the head coach from Muncie Southside, Kay Carmichael. 1966, Mr. Basketball from Lebanon, Rick Mount. From Pike High School, 1978, Lou Hill. From Carmel High School, 1968, Mr. Basketball, Billy Shepard. From Seymour High School, 1971, Baron Hill. Mr. Basketball, 1970, from Carmel, Indiana, David Shepard. From Rushville, a member of the 1979 team, Dennis Joseph Goins. From Speedway High School, 1970, Tom Gilbert. From East Chicago Roosevelt High School, she was Miss Basketball in 1979, LaTanya Pollard. From Arsenal Tech, 1970, Frank Kendrick. 1979, from Mount Vernon, Barb Skinner Morant. Mr. Basketball, 1971, from Jeffersonville High School, Mike Flynn. The assistant coach in 1980 from New Albany, Jack Ford. From Columbus High School, 1971, Bill McGinley. New Albany High School, 1981, Dave Bennett. From Greenwood, 1971, Jerry Nichols. From George Washington High School, Indianapolis, 1981, Miss Basketball, Cheryl Cook. From Connorsville, 1972, Phil Cox. He was Mr. Basketball in 1981 from Michigan City Rogers, Dan Palombizio. From South Bend, St. Joseph, 1972, Tom Abernathy. A member of the 1982 team from Plymouth, Indiana, Jack Edison. From Brown County High School, 1972, Bob Bond. In 1984, she was Miss Basketball from Mishawaka High School, Sharon Versip. 1973 assistant coach, 1974 head coach from New Albany, J. Kirby Overman. The assistant coach in 1985 from Warsaw High School, Al Rhodes. From Jennings County in 1973, Danny Brown. The assistant coach in 1985 from Benton Central, Jan Connor. Mr. Basketball, 1973, from Newcastle Chrysler High School, Michael Kent Benson. From 
Noblesville High School, the assistant coach in 1986, Dave Nicholson. Mr. Basketball, 1974, from Southwestern High School, Steve Collier. An all-star in 1986 from Warren Central, Linda Godby. Head coach in 1975 from Northrop High School, Bob Dill. Another member of the 86 team from North Central, Eileen Richardson. From Manuel High School, 1975, Derek Johnson. She was the assistant coach in 81, the head coach in 1987 from Rushville High School, Cinda Rice Brown. From Martinsville High School, 1975, Jerry Seasting. From Center Grove, 1987, Nikki Anderson. 1975, John Adams High School, Val Martin. From 1987, Seymour High School, Terry Morin. From Lagoti, 1975, Bill Butcher. A member of the 1987 team from Crawfordsville, Shannon Hardesty. Mr. Basketball, 1975, from Peru High School, Kyle Macy. A 1988 All-Star from LaPorte High School, Eric Dolzel. Beach Grove High School, 1975, Gary Raker. From Kokomo, 1988 All-Star, Brian Hogan. Rushville High School, 1976, Rick Goins. The assistant coach in 1988 from New Albany High School, James Miller. The 1978 head coach, Carmel High School, Eric Clark. A 1988 All-Star from Worthington Jefferson, Crystal Stahl. All-Star years, 1978, 1979, 1983 from Muncie Central, Bill Harrell. She was the assistant coach in 1988 from Clinton Central, Linda Barnett. From Wayne High School in Fort Wayne, 1977, Roosevelt Barnes, Jr. From 1978, South Bend LaSalle, Mr. Basketball, David Magley. Benton Central, 1979, Joanne Briette. From Anderson High School, 1981, assistant coach, 1984, head coach, Norm Hell. From Benton Central, 1981, Leslie, C.A. for Claude Felter. Nineteen eighty-three, Newcastle, Indiana, Steve Alford. From Newcastle, nineteen eighty-four, assistant coach, nineteen eighty-five, head coach, Sam Alford. From Triton High School, nineteen eighty-four, Loria Feldman. From Richmond High School. Head coach, 1987, Mr. Basketball, David Magley, 1978, Fort Austin, 88, George Griffin. Bedford, North Lawrence, 1985, girls all-star coach, Austin, Pete Pritchett. From Kokomo, 1986, head coach, Basil Mobby. From Scottsburg, 1986, head coach, Donna Cheatham. From Seymour High School, 1986, Erica McCoy. From 
1987 Miss Basketball Mental Attitude, Northrop, Lori Meyerding. From Noblesville High School, 1987, Chrissy Davis. Tipton High School, 1987, Jane Calhoun. From Greenfield Central, 1988, Beth Davis. Crown Point, 1988, Tracy Roller. And from West Lafayette, 1988, Meredith Sanders. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the 1989 Indiana All-Stars. First from New Washington, Jamie Matthews. From Lebanon High School, 1989, Rich Mount. From Valparaiso, Casey Schmidt. From Seymour, Julie Von Dillingen. Bloomington South, Chris Lawson. From Lawrence North, Todd Leary. From Warren Central, Greg Graham. Columbus North, Karen McKay. From Delta High School, Matt Painter. From Evansville Harrison, Cosser Cheney. From Terre Haute South, Tony McGee. From Alexandria Monroe High School, Sabrina Sloan. From Fort Wayne, Wayne, Nate Tubbs Jr. From Northview High School, Kenny Rowan. From Crawfordsville High School, Matt Petty. Benton Central, Cheryl Clemmy. Representing South Bend St. Joseph's High School, Rodney Holmes. From Greenfield Central High School, Janet Meeker. Indiana's Mr. Basketball for 1989 from Floyd Central, Pat Graham. And Indiana's Miss Basketball, 1989, from Scottsburg, Renee Westmoreland. From Noblesville, Courtney Cox. And from Tell City, Krista Blunk. From Elkhart Memorial, Erica Jackson. East Chicago Central, Bridget Pettis. From Huntington North, Nancy Hoover. From North Knox, Tricia Cullop. There they are, ladies and gentlemen, the 1989 All-Stars joining their predecessors. Sure you'll agree, it's a tremendous array of talent. We're certainly glad they could all be back with us this evening, and we want to thank especially Bill Shover, Fred Kortz, and Don Bates, former game directors, for assisting with the presentation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to call up a former All-Star. He was Mr. Basketball in 1972, and we ask that he join us now and lead the singing of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, Phil Cox, 1972, Mr. Basketball. Will you please stand and join, join with Phil as he leads the singing.
at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Cox, ladies and gentlemen, and now will you please be seated and enjoy your dinner. The 1953 Mr. Basketball, Halle Bryant. Hey, man, who's that cat coming down the street? I don't know, but it sounds to me like that whipping man with the bone. Sure having himself a ball. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? We have a marvelous evening here. I equate this with any Super Bowl or NBA Finals. Indiana high school basketball. Everywhere I go with the Trotters, I've been around the world, they always ask, you are who you, you from Indianapolis or where the races are and you play that basketball? And it's always a good feeling to hear that about your own hometown. I want to thank all the people connected with this program, Pat Aikman, has done a fabulous job getting this together, and all his staff, super. I'm just sitting there feeling good about it all, and I hope you enjoyed it too. He called on me, thank you. He called, he's seen me show off a time or two, and I hope you don't mind me showing off. Each person sitting down and probably standing up too is guaranteed at least two and a half smiles before you leave, right? We need smiles, we need laughter, and that's what the Globetrotters have epitomized over 60 years throughout the United States and throughout the world. So I'm gonna show you a few things that has made the Globetrotters famous, and I'll probably have a little audience participation, and no one will be embarrassed. The people I'm gonna fall on don't even know it, and that makes it nice. I'm gonna do for you a one-man Globetrotter magic circle. Everything you've seen in Middle and Curl and those other Globetrotters, I'm gonna do for you right here in fast motion and slow motion. And then I'll call on about six or seven lucky persons from this audience out there or up here, they will be in a circle around me, and you will be surprised how well some of them will do their own super-duper magic circle, all right? Now, whenever I go out to perform or speak, 
people look at me and say, boy, which one is he? He's not bald-headed? Doesn't look like Metal Lock Lemon? So I have to convince, <laughs> I have to convince the audience that you're not looking at a pseudo player. So I always open up the show at the risk of sounding like a braggart by doing something spectacular, like placing the ball on the floor and picking it up from a standstill with the back of my fingers. Makes your floor beautiful. <laughs> I might get you out here in the show, Tony. That's my pal over there. Here we go. A little dribbling first. After I do this, then people applaud. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you. And another one I do, after that one, they say, maybe he is, right? So I, I used to do one more. Have you ever seen any of the glove cards? Anybody take a ball, hold it out on the fingertips, flip it up in the air, let it come down, bounce off the big part of the muscle, land up on top of the skin part of the fingers, roll down the arm, slowly back on this finger, back down the same arm, and spin the ball? Have you ever seen that? <laughs> Would you like to see it? All right. Okay, we got this orchestrated. My buddy over there is going to play the music, and I'm going to do all those little things for you. Behind my back, through the legs twice, off the kneecap, up off the side 17 shoe, back to the right hand, I'm going to spin the ball. All right. And after this, people say, whoa, he, he must be super glow trap. All right, so play the music, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. Okay. Can no mic. <laughs> no. Hey. They told me that I only have about 45 minutes. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so I got another two and a half minutes. I'm going to call on the Miss Basketball and Mr. Basketball of this year to come out and be part of my participants. And no one will be embarrassed. So can they come down to Miss Basketball and Mr. Basketball? Come on down. How often do you get a chance to play with a live globe card, right? And I'm going to call on a teammate of mine from the 1953. And boy, I'm so pleased to see him. Lamar Lundy, is he around? Don't chicken out, Lamar. Come on out. I've got to get one guy from my area to come up here. Come on out, Lamar. Lamar Lundy, you've got to give him a big hand. All right. He was one of the 49ers. Uh, Four, okay, beautiful, okay. Graham and Westmoreland. Excellent, don't worry about a thing. It's normal to be a little nervous, right? Okay, and I'm gonna have you to do some things that you never thought you could do. Just don't try these things against Kentucky, right? <laughs> it took me a long time to learn how to do these things. About 12 seconds. Lamar, beautiful. Okay, we got, oh, and I gotta get a friend of mine from Phoenix. Bill Shover, you gotta come out. See, I'm drafting these people out here, right? And Wanda, Wanda, I gotta get a lady out here too. Wanda, you can eat your dessert later. Please come up. Nobody will be embarrassed. Wanda, the lady who ran. Come on up, Wanda. This is gonna be super. I'm gonna have them to do the magic circle after I show them how, all right? And I got Lamar Lund, and I need one of the uh, Harley Andrews. Harley, play with me. Harley, come up quickly. Be a star, Harley. Your last chance, Harley. Come up quickly. Hurry up. Now we go. This is gonna be a circle, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Where's Harley Andrews? Uh, uh, Harley. Harley, come on up quickly. Looking good, all right? All right, looking good so far. All right, so we got a representative. And uh, Bobby Plum, come on, pal. This is beautiful. Don't, don't chicken out. Come on out, pal. All right. That's the guy that made the shot that goes around the world. All right. Okay. Now, you won't believe this, but they're going to be fabulous. They don't even know it, but they're going to be stars. I'm going to show you what the one-man circle looks like. I'm going to do all the trick passes to them you've seen us do on television. After that, I'm going to show them what to do, all right? And uh, in fact, I am going to call, try to make a, a circle, but make it kind of rectangular so you around me. Imagine, see, join hands quickly. Join hands and uh, get, I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. And spread out far as you can without tilting, right? <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is do a, all the trick back. You can drop your hands now, right? It looks better. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Fun is what this is all about. And, uh, I'm gonna do all the trick pass. First of all, audience, I must condition each one of my participants to be alert and ready to catch one of these fancy passes because they don't catch these passes all day. Uh, they very seldom get a chance to do these things. So I, first of all, I gotta get them ready. So be alert. If you're not alert, the ball can hit you upside the head and you get a ooh wee knot. <laughs> you know what a ooh wee knot is? A ooh wee knot is when you're not paying attention, the ball hits you on the corner of the head, you go ooh wee. <laughs> so hang loose, right? In fact, I'm gonna put you in position so you will be stars. In fact, you're gonna change place with Bill, okay? All right. Wanda, you, you're going to change place with her. And this is going to be super. Bob, you just hang in there. Don't tilt backwards, right? OK. OK. OK, this is what the one-man uh, circle looks like, but I got to get them ready. Be alerted all the time. If you're not ready now, the boss will come over and do things to you. So I think they'll be, they'll be ready when I get through. Now, see, Plump is ready. See? Some, see, he's very cool, right? I throw the ball out there. Inside, he's going like this. Boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's ready, OK? Good catch, all right? See, now I know his reflexes are sharp. 
No, I always throw the ball back to the star. <laughs> okay. okay, here we go. No, 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 no. Come, come on. Okay, now you got it. Now yeah, it's perfect, all right? Okay, looking good. Now don't drop it, Wanda. Now Wanda's ready. She is ready. I knew she was ready. I can tell her. Watch it, Wanda. Now she is ready. I knew Wanda was ready. Delores, I knew she was ready. She, see, she was there when I was playing basketball. That's right. And this guy stays ready because he's Mr. Basketball. And Miss Basketball, too. Now watch it. Now she's ready. See? Okay, that's good. See? All right, that's good. All right, Ron, I got to make sure you can. Excellent. There you go. Excellent. All right, here we go. Now she is ready. Don't take a pass, Bill. All right, here we go. Okay. Okay, all is kind of cool. <laughs> all is kind of cool. He said, don't, don't, don't do it to me. Yeah, okay. Okay, now some guys, you have to, you have to lay down something real fabulous in order to get them to react to it. So he's not going for it, so I have to do one of these numbers on him. Now I know he's ready, see? He almost ended up back there, okay? Lamarta, good to see you, man. I tell you, boy. All right. Now, they're all ready, so right now I'm going to do all the trick passes you've seen us do on television. And her, the guy, turn the music on. You all just throw me the ball back. And second time around, I'll show you what to do. Okay, I'm coming to you first, Bobby. Play with me. Right. Turn it off when I shake somebody's hand. Turn it on right now. This is unrehearsed, by the way. Okay, I'm coming to you with a trick pass. Everybody will get a trick pass. There you go. <laughs> Little Mars ready over there, boy. I tell you. All right, good catch. All right. <laughs> All right, good catch. You're doing good. You should rebound for me. You know that? <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's a biggie. You ready back here, Hart? Yeah. Off the arm. Here we go. Okay, okay he's ready. All right, doing good. Okay, Miss Basketball. All right, looking good. Okay. Watch the back here. That guy's casual, I tell you, Miss Basketball. Okay. All right, he's ready. All right. Watch it, Wanda. You got to catch it, Wanda. Don't mess up, Wanda. You got to catch the ball. What? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Beautiful. I like that. <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm going to give you about seven on Bill. You get all of them, right? This is the array. Cleve Hart. Bill is ready. Here we go. Here we go. Be ready, Bill. You get about five of them. One. Bill, don't get fired. Don't get fired, Bill. Okay. Good catch. You got one more chance, Bill. That's good. Okay. Here we go. Good catch. You're doing good. Real good. Very good. I forgot to get one though, nothing. Watch one. Here we go. That's good. Watch. Okay, Bill, be alert, Bill. Here we go. You got it, Bill. Watch, watch, watch. Okay. Give them all a big hand. All right? Now hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not it. We got 12 seconds left. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how well. How good a students they are. They will learn how to do one of those. Everybody will learn a part. If you do, if you learn your part, we do it all together as a team. We will call this a super duper magic So, Your part, catch the ball, and do that. I've been watching me for about 12 years. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, that looks good, but do like this. And look at it once, and then throw it behind your back. Get through your leg, look at it. Right. Perfect, all right. You just want some extra time on TV. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Lamar, you get the ball quickly, bounce it and catch it, bump it off the right knee. All right. Got to pick your knee up. Like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do, like some, do like you used to do those guys in Los Angeles Rams. Pick your knee way up, bounce it, and, and bump, bring your knee way up. Bounce it and catch it, bring your knee up. Perfect. All right. I knew that guy was ready. Harley, you take the ball quickly, take it through your left leg, I mean, take it behind your back, flip it over like that. Okay, Miss Basketball, you, you do a very cute one. You take an easy one like this, make it kind of dainty, go like that. Do like this. No, 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 no. I'll give you a better one. No, just kidding. I'll give you a better one. She said, no. I'll give you a better one. Uh, which one did you do? Over your back? Yeah, okay. You just take the ball, bounce it, and do like that, and slap it back to me. Bounce it up high, and then. Perfect. Hey, a lot of ladies can't do that. I'm telling you, really. And uh, you get it. Through your left leg, off your forehead. That's kind of cool. Looks all together when we do that. You can bump it off with some vigor, right? Vigor. You got to have a vigor. All right. Perfect. Got a crooked head, but that's fine. Okay? Wanda, you got a good one. I was supposed to give you... She said, he's done. You take the ball quickly and turn around and throw it over your head. You turn around twice. You won't get inebriated, right? Just turn around twice and make sure you... With your back facing... Your face facing that way and throw it over your head. Excellent. All right. It's good. Okay? All right. Bill, you got the last one. You catch the ball, turn around and face that way. Okay, pretend you got Nancy out there. You're going to dance with Nancy, right? Yeah. You, you just throw the ball over your head. Right. You're facing that way, square off, very good. Right. Throw it over your head. As soon as you throw it over your head, your body will do this. Look, left, right, way in and way out. I'm going to bump it off your target. It won't hurt. Okay. Let's rehearse. Come on. Okay. Left, left, 
right, in. In is always that way, Bill. Right. <laughs> you forgot. Right. Look. Left, right. In is that way, in and out, right? So come Left. out with, yeah, right, right. in and out. out. Tell my bumper right off your target. Face me. Now, you're being observed by a lot of people, Bill. You know that? <laughs> you so, give me the justice. Yeah, it's okay. You know, you're a genius, see? Catch it, turn around, throw it over your head. Do your thing. Left. Right, in, out. All right, perfect. Okay, let's go. Okay, here we go. Now, we're going to call this a super duper dynamite 1989 magic circle. Play the music. Everybody do your thing. Have a little fun. Okay? Everybody have a little fun. Do your thing. Everybody know what you're going to do? Play the music over here. Don't get fired. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'll just give you a straightaway pass. Peace. Do your thing. All right, looking good. Beautiful. All right. All right. You're doing good there, Lamar. I'm telling you, so. All right, Harley. All right. Beautiful. All right. All right, this guy's short. All right, be careful there. Don't fall down. <laughs> okay, good. All right. All right! Perfect, perfect. Thank you for giving this one. Give him a big hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy the evening and hope we win two big games. And I want to say hello to my friends, all right? I didn't get a chance to visit with a lot of my friends here because I had a little flu last night and I kind of stayed to myself, didn't want to give it to you, plus I had no energy at all. I'm glad I was able to get this in. I want to thank my, my family for coming and all those nice person, Myrtle, my sister and brother, and thank everybody who's been beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Basketball 1953 and Harlem Globetrotter, Mr. Hallie Bryant. Ladies and gentlemen, you get to hear me again. I want to uh, mention something about this little thing here. That's the first time I've ever seen Harley Andrews pass a ball. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to be here. Our keynote speaker this evening is a man who really needs no introduction in Indiana or Hoosier hysteria. He's a native from Brazil, Indiana, graduated from New Albany High School in 1949. The man is a legend. Uh, went to Louisiana State University, was three times All-Southeastern, conference member, honorable mention All-American. And I've writ I, I wrote down here some of these nice things about him. One of the things that I left out was one of his claim to fame is the fact that he made Bob Pettit what he is because he passed to him so much when he was down there. Played in the 1952 College All-American game later was an alternate on the 56th United States Olympic team. In 1958, he was a member of the first American basketball team to tour Russia. Joe, I have to tell you, you taught them very well. They're doing okay. He was with Phillips Petroleum Company playing for the Phillips 66ers for four years. Later went with Converse Shoes. He was vice president. Got tired of doing a promotional thing. He and 49 other people bought the company in 1981. They sold it in 1987. He then was unanimous, unanimously elected as the athletic director at LSU, going back to his home university. Last year, it was voted the fourth best men's athletic program in all of collegiate basketball. So he continues his program. I was going to, I think he owns Hall of Fames. I'm going to read a few Hall of Fames that he's a member of. LSU Athletic Hall of Fame, Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame, Louisiana Coaches Hall of Fame, the National Association of Basketball Coaches Silver Anniversary Team. I want to tell you, if you haven't met Joe Dean personally, perhaps you recognize him from the color commentary that he did for NBC, TBS, TVS, Lorimer, He's known throughout the nation as a colorful individual. He's a very good friend of mine, or he was before I started this introduction. I hope he is later. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, former All-Stars, Miss Basketballs, Mr. Basketballs, it's my supreme pleasure to introduce, and I'd like for you to give a re-welcome to the great Hoosier, Joe Dean. <clears throat> Thank you, Bobby, very much. Let me say, special guests, honorees, ladies and gentlemen. I was in New Orleans two days ago, and a friend of mine 
said to me before I die, I want to go to Indianapolis and see the Indiana Basketball State Championship. That's how far and how widespread Hoosier hysteria really is. He asked me, well, what is Hoosier hysteria? And I said, I don't really know. But for me, it's the following. It's a young boy listening in 1939 to his first state championship tournament on radio. It was knowing that Everett Case from Frankfurt, who later coached at North Carolina State and who became a friend of mine in his dying days, was the first all-star coach. It was watching the Washington Hatchets play the New Albany Bulldogs in the very early 40s. And if you can believe it, I could tell you the whole team. The Artie Groves, the Leo Crystal Clears, Hooks Mangan, Jarman, DeJernit. That's amazing. Most of you could do the same, I'm sure. I thought Hook Mangan was the greatest player I'd ever seen. They wore knee socks. And of course, they went on to win an, the Indiana State Championship. Artie Grove's family said it best, I think. When he was a, placed into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame recently, his family, in the ad they took out in the program, said, his dreams have been fulfilled. Because when you're a young lad and you grow up in this state, that's what it means. I was on my first team in the fourth grade, and being on a team is the greatest thing that can happen. I got my first uniform. It said Silver Street School, SSS. I thought I was Superman. I remember my first sectional like it was yesterday. I went over to Jeffersonville, Indiana, and I thought it was the biggest building that I'd ever been in in my life. And of course, I remember my first state tournament. And kids walk on all over the place with leather jackets. They had their letter on from their school. And Butler Fieldhouse was, was without question the largest building that I thought existed on the face of the earth. And it still might be in my dreams and in my memories. Oh, it's the bands, it's the cheerleaders. It's your name in the paper. It's the roar of the crowd. It's the people knowing you in your hometown when you walk down the street. It's the leather jacket that you wear that has your school name on it or your letter. It's the basket on a barn or in an alley. It's people in towns all over Hoosier that know more about basketball than anybody else in the world, at least they think they do. It's the barber. And of course, it's the joy and it's the heartbreak. It's the coaches, the Marion Crowleys, the Everett Cases, the Bill Greens. But it's also the Clyde Lavellettes. And it's the Bobby Plumps, whose shots will be heard around the world forever. It's the Oscar Robertson, and for my money, inch for inch, pound for pound, the greatest player to ever play the game, and this state produced him. <laughs> it's the Joe Sextons, who was a tremendous athlete the Kyle Macy's who could fill it full, the Jimmy Rails, the Van Arsdales who took trouble to be here tonight, the Rick Mounts, they called him the Rocket. I remember Vic Bubis at Duke telling me, he said, I've seen a jump shooter that's the greatest I've ever seen. And of course, it's Larry Bird. Delray Books, George McInnes, who I thought was incredible. Jay Edwards and Scott Skiles, and we could go on, and I'm sure I'm left so many out. But who's your hysteria is dreams. Dreams of a young boy seeing written on the side of a wall in his town on the state, Bulldogs. Those are the dreams. The dreams of being on a team 
the dreams of being some part of something that's so special and so fantastic. I think more than anything else, and I told Bobby Plump this tonight, what you've done in being a part of an all-star team for the rest of your life, you'll be remembered. I spoke to John David Crow yesterday, who's the athletic director at Texas A&M. Whenever John David Crow's introduced, he's always introduced as a man who won the Heisman Trophy. Oscar Robertson, when he's introduced, is always introduced from Crispus Attucks High School and the greatest player to ever play in the state of Indiana. I was on the very first American basketball team to tour the Soviet Union. And while we were there, they brought the American track and field team over. On our track team, we had a man by the name of Rayford Johnson. And at that time in his life, he was considered the greatest athlete on the face of the earth. He was because he was the world's decathlon champion. And for those of you that don't know, that's 10 grueling events in track and field. Running, throwing, jumping, it's the toughest test of all for an athlete. He was 28 years old. The shadows were lengthening for him. He'd made a lot of all-star teams, but he wanted one more. I sat in the Lennon Stadium among over 100,000 people. The press had built it up beyond your wildest dream. These two great powers, these two giants. But the truth was, they came to watch Rayford Johnson battle the Russian, whose name was Yusnetsov. Ladies and gentlemen, Yusnetsov had put in five years of his lifetime for this confrontation. He also wanted to be the greatest athlete on the face of the earth. And he was finally tuned for the competition. The decathlon has run over two days, five events each day. And deep into the second day, and only the javelin was left, the throwing of a spear, the oldest form of competition known to man. Yasnetsov on his last heave had thrown the javelin 222 feet. Rayford Johnson had never ever thrown the javelin 222 feet in his entire lifetime. Everything else in the track meet had finished, but not a single person left the arena. It was spooky. The shadows were lengthening on the fields, and Rayford Johnson had one throw left. Something that the all-stars all know all about There is something very special deep inside each and every one of us if we want to reach down and get it. Most people never do, but it does exist. You can call it pride or whatever you would like to call it, but it's down there. Second wind. Some people have never experienced it. They never felt the excitement of a little string music when that ball goes through that net. God, the excitement of that. Oscar Robertson had symphonies going off in his head. When Rayford Johnson's last javelin throw leveled off, you suddenly knew that this man had just reached back and he'd thrown the javelin further than he'd ever thrown it in his entire lifetime, beyond the 222-foot mark. He was still the greatest athlete on the face of the earth because he wanted to be. I tell you the story because they put him on the top box raised the American flag, played the national anthem, and put a gold medal around his neck. The simplicity of it all. The purity of being a high school basketball player in this great state of Indiana called Hoosier Hysteria. Those are the memories I have. That day in Moscow, Russia, that gold medal cost $19.95. There, there was no no-cut contracts, no million dollars waiting, just wanting to be the greatest, just wanting to be the best. 
On my way home, my, my mind ran away with me. I thought, oh, you really can if you think you can. He proved it. So have you. I run two miles every day about 5.30 in the morning. I did this morning. The other day, a friend asked me, he said, how'd you happen to start running? I said, my youngest son wasn't doing very well in school, and I flew into where he was to check on him. Found out he wasn't going to class. I decided to take his car away from him and bring it home. For those of you that have children in the audience tonight, if you take your car away from them, they'll make the dean's list. Just an extra that I'm throwing in for you tonight. It works. But as I was driving away or getting ready to, I said, Mark, if I have to come back, I'm going to kick the hell out of you. He's bigger than I am. He said, Dad, do you think you can take me? I didn't know if I could take him or not. But when I got home, I started pumping iron and running two miles a day, I'll tell you that. I just wanted to be ready just in case. I thought if Rayford Johnson can, or if you can make an all-star team, I can whip my boy's butt if I have to. You know, it takes such a positive, the camaraderie of this group and the positive attitude tonight just caught me up. And it takes that to be successful. I always love the story of the two little boys at Christmas. One got everything in his room and he bitched and complained and was un un unhappy. And the other little boy, all he got was a room full of manure. But he was screaming and hollering and he was happy and he was laughing and he started digging straight down. He said, I know there's a pony down there somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a friend who coaches basketball at Gulfport, Mississippi High School. His name is Bert Jenkins. And Bert Jenkins lost his right leg above the knee in World War II. He was machine gunned by the Germans. A German surgeon removed his leg above the knee. He was 18 years old. But he loved the game we love so much. And he wanted to be a coach. Folks don't want to hire one-legged basketball coaches. And he had a very difficult time, but finally Gulfport did. He was the winningest coach in the history of the state of Mississippi. He's won 892 games. One year he was 40 and zero. He's produced seven state championships and he does it on a peg leg and he plays defense. Bump, 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 you can hear it. And if you can't play for him, you can't play for anybody. You can if you think you can. And that's what we learn from this. And that's what's so great. I thought going home that night in Moscow too, how much you have to love it and how much you had to love it to dedicate yourself to be what you've become, to be an all-star, to be successful, to be on a winning team. I interviewed a man recently and I said, how do you feel, Bill? And he said, I feel like a dog on a dog sled team. And he said, if you're not the lead dog, he said, the scenery never changes. That's right, you're sniffing all your life. But I came tonight to tell you that you're the lead dog. All of your lead dogs because you've loved it, you've been successful, you've accepted the challenge, you've made it all happen. What makes winners? Discipline and commitment. That's what makes it happen discipline and commitment. I have two sons. And you remember when hair was a big thing and my two boys always had short haircuts and my neighbor said, how do you do that? Well, you must be tough on long hair. I said, I've never mentioned hair in my life in my home. And I never did. But I always decided who would sit down at the evening table and eat dinner. I always made that decision. The head coach, I didn't care if they cut their hair or not, but I was just trying to create something and something that was meaningful. 
discipline, commit themselves to something. I've been in the camp business for this is this summer will be my I was telling Kyle Macy tonight, this will be he worked for me one summer. This will be my twenty fourth summer to have a boys basketball camp. I'll I'll lease a little facility in Nowheresville. It's up on the Louisiana Mississippi border and we take a couple hundred kids a week. We've sold out for years. I don't know why, because we treat them like dogs. I don't know why they come back. I've never understood why they come back. Two years ago, a coach says, does anybody really ever come back to this place? Ladies and gentlemen, they come back because they're begging for people to tell them what to do. And that's why this arena is so great. It's one of the last bridges where there's respect for authority. And that's why these men and these young women have been successful. They perform as they're asked to perform. I kicked a boy in the butt with my foot five years ago at my camp. And the mama sued me. I know you know a mother would never do anything like that, but she sued me. Thank God my brother-in-law was an attorney in Baton Rouge that helped me. But the judge asked me what I thought, and I said, Judge, I just have one answer to you. I wished I'd have kicked him twice instead of once. Because he needed two kicks. He was a two-kick kid. You've seen two kickers? That same summer, I also put my arms around a boy who was 6'6 and weighed 250 pounds, who was black and had sweat all over him. And I hugged him and told him that I loved him. And I meant it. In a minute, because he's from nine kids, and and I'm trying to help him get through school. I always, I always love the story of the circuit preacher rider. He was on his way home, and and when he got to the outskirts of the city, a smart aleck cowboy stopped him, and he said, "Preacher, they tell me in the town that you don't dance, drink, gamble, do any of those things. Is that really true?" And he said, "That's really true." He said, "I'd love to see you dance." He said, "I don't know how." And the cowboy pulled that six-shooter out of his pistol, out of his holster, and put that pistol on him, and he said, Preacher, get down and dance. And he started shooting the bullets at his feet, and, of course, the preacher danced a jig, and the cowboy laughed. He loved it. But the preacher was very calm, because he'd been to the mountain, and as the six-shooter was being emptied, the preacher was calling back on his horse, and he had a little sawed-off shotgun that he carried on the far side of his horse just for emergencies just like this. And he eased it out just that quick. And now he had a dead bead on the smart aleck cowboy. He said, cowboy, said, you get down off your horse now. And the cowboy did, and he said, cowboy, let me ask you. He said, have you ever kissed the backside of a horse? It's funny you ask, preacher. He said, I never have, but I've always wanted to. <laughs> a lot of us are that way. We've never done it, but we've always wanted to. We dream great dreams, but they never happen. But the people here tonight, they've laid on the pillow and caught the passes and made the shots. And you don't, let me say this to you. Make no mistake about it. They can remember almost every game. I remember the very first basket that I made as a high school player. I banked it in on a long shot out front, but it banked in. I shot it too hard. But I can remember it. Dreams, they call it. I thought going home that night in Moscow, I thought, who touched Rayford Johnson? Who touched him? His coaches, his parents, his friends. My coach in high school touched me. He touched me very, very deeply. My father had quit school in the ninth grade to go to work in a cannon factory at Scottsburg, Indiana. In fact, when I came home and told my dad I was going to go to, I was going to, go to LSU to school, he said, you don't want to go to California. He had the letters mixed up. And he was a great guy. And the coaches in this room tonight know what I'm saying. I have a picture of my coach hanging on my office wall, and I look at him every day because I don't ever want to forget him because he touched my life. He died when he was 38 years old. Never had a chance to totally fulfill all his dreams. 
I've told this story on him many times. There's a young man here tonight, and I call him young because he's younger than me, who played for my coach. My coach cut him from the squad. He coaches here in your state now, and he's very successful. I came home for supper, and my mother said, why did they cut this young man from the team? I said, I guess the coach didn't think he was good enough, Mom. Why do you ask me? And she said, well, he's cried himself to sleep every night for 10 nights, and his mother says his heart is broken. I told my coach that story the next day. And three days later, he was shooting layups in the layup drill. And two years later, he was captain of the team and led the team in scoring. Won a scholarship to a small college in Indiana. And coaches in your state today. Somebody touched him. Somebody touched him. I played my last collegiate basketball game, and when I finished and came out of the locker room, a man was sitting there in a wheelchair. And he said, Joe Dean, he said, I'm a cripple. I have been since birth, and I will be all my life, but I've seen every game here. I've made every pass with you, made every dribble, made every shot. I've been Joe Dean for three years, and I wanted to touch you. And it made me realize beyond my wildest dream what I had done for someone else. I wonder if Oscar Robertson or Kyle Macy or Joe Sexton or Bobby Plump, if you really stop to think the pleasure and the excitement that you gave so many and how the little ones looked up to you and realized how great you were because you were part of Hoosier hysteria. I have a little girlfriend who's 10. Her name is Sarah. I won't tell you her last name, it'd be unfair. She was born with no arms and just one leg. And she lives in Shreveport, Louisiana, and she's one of LSU's greatest fans. I've had her as my guest a couple of times. She watches every game she can on TV and listens on radio. She's never bet anything but an A on her report card in her lifetime. I said, Sarah, how do you do that? And she said, I just do my best every day. Doesn't everyone? I said, no, everyone doesn't. She takes an apple every time she goes to the doctor, you know, an apple a day. Her spine's been operated on nine times by a pediatric surgeon in Chattanooga, Tennessee. She has an infectious smile. She loves life. When she was six months old, the parents wondered, what had God given them? What is this? And she has a brother, Scott, who's six years older. He put her in a wagon and started pulling her up the hill outside the home and said, come on, Mom and Dad, follow me. Follow me. Scott touched their lives. She's touched mine. She's touched mine. I thought that night going home in Moscow that the American dream is not dead. Oh, I know it's tougher for some than others. I know that. But it's alive and well and breathing very heavily, and it's out there waiting for a lot of young folks like the people behind me to go out there and get it and and be the greatest. They can make it. It's that perpetual reminder that if you'll bring dedication, enthusiasm, and sweat to your work, America will lay the world at your feet. It does exist. All you got to do is go somewhere else in the world, and you know. When you watch the Chinese, are willing to die for it. The sign says freedom. But on the other side, it says responsibility. Always has been that way, always will be. Athletics speaks the universal language. And it's spoken in every culture and every tongue in the whole wide world. I've seen kings bent low and I've seen beggars crowned in my life. And simple excellence is always celebrated for what it truly is. That's the arena we honor tonight. A basket counts the same in Kokomo, in Terre Haute, in Newark, New Jersey, in Los Angeles, California. By the way, Sarah loves to swim. I said, how do you swim, Sarah? She said, I roll over on my back and kick my one leg, 
And Mr. Dean, I'm getting better. What's your goal? She wants to make the all-star team. She wants to be Mr. Basketball, Miss Basketball. It's all relative. She said, Mr. Dean, all I want to do is swim the width of the pool. I said, you can do that. I think I can, Mr. Dean, but she said, I want to do it in the deep water. Because that's where the big guys play. That's why I came tonight. Because that, that's what we've got to continue to do. Yes, we've been great, but we've got to continue to be great. We've got to swim the width of the pool, but we've got to do it in the deep water. Man's finest hour. His greatest fulfillment for all he holds dear is that moment when he's worked his heart out in a good cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle. Victorious. 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 God's your winners. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Thank you very much, Joe Dean. I think it's a sure thing that at that man's school there won't be any cheating or difficulties with athletics, not with a philosophy like that. Thank you very much, Joe. You mentioned one thing about camaraderie, and I have to tell the people out here because they didn't get a chance to see it. The reason we were, had such a hard time getting off on the introductions of the former All-Stars that were here, when they got together out in these halls, it was like an alumni reunion that they hadn't seen each other for so long and we couldn't get them lined up. They just wanted to talk and swap stories and it was the hardest job I think we've ever had. And we said if we ever do this again when we do the 100th anniversary, we're gonna have to get them out there a little earlier because they really enjoyed it and it was really something to see, it really was. You know, much has changed in the 50 years since the first team was selected in 1939. But one thing remains the same, and that's the excitement that goes with every game, no matter how big, no matter how small. And of course, with that excitement, there's the usual jitters. Even the most experienced athlete will admit to that. Can you imagine what it must have been like in 1939 for this first all-star team? They hadn't played together before. They hardly knew each other. They're pulled together, and they're told to go out and play the current Indiana State champions. Well, they went out, they played them, and they won, and of course, the rest is history. I'm going to ask each of those members to come down one at a time. As your name is called, will you please come down to the center of the stage and join us here for a special presentation ceremony. First, George Fields from Mooresville. George Fields is married. <laughs> George Fields is married. His wife's name is Joanne. They have two children and four grandchildren. Next. Next, Don Fraser of Greencastle. Don is retired. He has four children and enjoys sports and fishing. Roger Bundy of Salem. Roger also spends part of the year in Winter Haven, Florida. He's retired, is married, has four children, and also enjoys fishing. George Taylor of Greencastle. George, too, spends part of the year in Florida. He's retired. His wife's name is Betty. They have four daughters and eight grandchildren. He enjoys golf, fishing, and all sports. You understand that the... The locales we're giving for these uh, gentlemen are the hometowns uh, in which they resided when they were named All-Stars. John Williams of Southport. John is retired. He has two daughters. He enjoys golf and the Indianapolis 500.
Howard Mitchell, Indianapolis Crispus Attics. Howard currently lives in Philadelphia. His wife's name is Nadine. He has one son, Howard Jr., and a granddaughter named Molly. Fred Crampy of Indianapolis Shortridge is deceased, but he's represented here this evening by his widow, Alberta. Mrs. Crampy lives in Plainfield, has two children and five grandchildren. Wayne Payton of Spencer, also deceased, represented this evening by his sister, Mary Lou Huffman. And the assistant coach for that team from Newcastle, Doyle Plunkett. Buck Plunkett lives in Newcastle and Fort Myers, Florida. He's retired, he's married with two daughters, and enjoys fishing down in Florida. When the Indianapolis Star asked its readers in 1939 to vote for an all-star team that summer, it's doubtful that even the most optimistic of those associated with the venture could ever envision what would happen in the next 50 years. Even the players and coaches, I'm sure, in that first game, if you had said to them 50 years from now, in the summer in Indianapolis, you're going to be standing on a stage in front of a thousand people celebrating, they probably would have laughed. I doubt very much that they could have envisioned it. But they are here tonight. We're so very, very happy that so many of them have been able to join us. We thank them for what they started. And as a sign of appreciation, we have a couple of awards we'd like to give to each one of you. And I'd like to ask Bobby Plump if he would come forward now to help in the presentation. Bobby? You've seen these gold basketballs used in the opening ceremonies. These, this is a special ball made especially for this occasion. And folks, this is not spray painted, a regular basketball spray painted. These are gorgeous things, genuine leather, and we are presenting to each of the representatives from 39 here this evening one of the gold basketballs. And I see Pat Aikman, our current game director, is assisting in this also. So gentlemen, would you please pass out the gold balls? <laughs> Boy, he's a fast learner. Now, Pat and Bobby, will you please assist with this next presentation also? Governor Evan Bayh has declared each of you to be a Sagamore of the Wabash, and I have a citation for each one of you. Obviously, I won't read all 10 because they're the same, but the citation reads, know all men by these presents, whereas the greatness of the sons of Indiana derives in part from qualities possessed by the noble chieftains of the Indian tribes, which once roamed its domain, and whereas it has been the immemorial custom of the state of Indiana to attract to its support those who exhibited such qualities and whereas there has endeared himself to the citizens of Indiana one, and then it, the name of each person, distinguished by humanity in living, loyalty in friendship, wisdom in counsel, and inspiration and leadership. Now therefore, recognizing his greatness and desiring to avail myself of his counsel, I do hereby appoint him a chieftain upon my staff with the rank and title of Sagamore of the Wabash. Witness my hand and the seal of the Council of the Sagamores at Indianapolis, Indiana, this the 17th day of June in the year of our Lord, 1989, signed Evan by Governor of the State of Indiana. Would you gentlemen pass these out, please? This is a test of uh, Bobby Plump's IQ because he has to read the names on these certificates.
Well, there they are, ladies and gentlemen, George Fields, Don Frazier, Roger Bundy, George Taylor, John Williams, Howard Mitchell, Alberta Crampy, Mary Lou Huffman, and Doyle Plunkett, the 1939 original All-Stars. Let's have a good hand for them. And now you may return to your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your eyes to the center screen. It's been the dream and goal of just about every Hoosier youngster who plays the game of basketball, sought by many, but achieved by only a few. It's being named an Indiana High School Basketball All-Star. 1989, the 50th year of the Indiana High School Basketball All-Star Classic. The first year was 1939. The Indianapolis Star announced plans to showcase the best of Indiana's high school seniors in a midsummer classic. The first team was selected by public ballot. They would be matched against the state champion, Frankfurt Hot Dogs. Since its inception, over 700 high school seniors have worn the Indiana All-Star jersey, the culmination of a childhood dream. But the game has been just the beginning for innumerable collegiate and professional careers. George Crow, Clyde Lavellet, Hallie Bryant, Bobby Plump, Don Schlunt, Terry Dissinger, Scott Skiles, Kyle Macy, Mike Woodson, Randy Whitman. For those of us who know and love basketball, there's always that special game, that particular player, that incredible point that holds a uniquely warm place in our hearts. Who can forget the big O, Oscar Robertson, the super talented young man who led Crispus Attucks to two consecutive state championships on a hot, sultry night in Louisville in 1956, when he set the courts afire with 41 points, blasting Kentucky 102 to 77. It was an all-star single game record that wasn't touched until 1969 by George McGinnis. Jimmy Rail, known as the Splendid Splinter, capped his rousing high school career at Kokomo by sweeping the Trester Award and Mr. Basketball Honors in 1959. He went on to IU where he still ranks as one of the most prolific scorers in the school's history. He twice popped the school record with 56 points in a single game. We'll always remember Tom and Dick Van Arsdale. The Van Arsdales were nearly as identical on the court as they were off. Selected co-Mr. Basketballs in 1961, they each led the Indiana team with 26 points in the first game. Following their success at Indianapolis Manual, they both starred in basketball at Indiana University and had outstanding 12-year careers in the NBA. Billy Keller, the 1965 Mr. Basketball, guided Indianapolis Washington to the state title and went on to Purdue, where he won the Naismith Award for being one of the nation's best players. He then joined the Indiana Pacers, for whom he was a key figure in ABA titles in 1970, 72, and 73. Rick Mount, Mr. Basketball 1966. Considered one of the greatest shooters of all time, Mount poured in over 2,500 points while at Lebanon High School. He took his famous jump shot to Purdue, where he, without missing a beat, continued to set school records and was a three-time All-American. He played five years with the American Basketball Association for Indiana, Kentucky, Utah, and Memphis. On June 28, 1969, George McGinnis turned in the greatest performance in All-Star history. The 6-7 phenomenon from Indianapolis, Washington, scored 53 points, 30 rebounds, four blocked shots, and three assists as Indiana buried Kentucky 114 to 83 in front of 17,875 spectators. A 
six foot ten gentle giant from Newcastle, the 1973 Mr. Basketball, Kent Benson, went on to Indiana University, where he was a member of the Hoosiers 1976 National Championship basketball team and selected most valuable player of the tourney. He played 11 years with the National Basketball Association for Detroit, Milwaukee, Utah, and Cleveland. The importance of teamwork to overall personal achievement has always been part of the training at the All-Star Camp preceding the game. It was a lesson Larry Bird must have taken to heart. In the two-game series for the 1974 All-Star Games, Bird scored a total of 18 points. But since that time, many observers have rated him the greatest all-around basketball player of all time. He was three-time All-American and selected College Player of the Year when he carried Indiana State to the NCAA Finals. The most recent All-Star to become legend, 1983 Mr. Basketball Steve Alford, scored 2,116 points while at Newcastle High School. He did likewise for Coach Bob Knight while stringing together four prolific seasons at Indiana University. Alfred helped the United States win a gold medal in the 1984 Olympics and spurred IU to the 1987 NCAA Championship. Steve plays now with the NBA's Golden State Warriors. Since 1946, Proceeds from the Indiana All-Star Game have helped countless organizations and individuals to prevent blindness and help the visually impaired. To date, the All-Star Games have generated over one and a half million dollars for the Indianapolis Stars Fund for the Blind. For both the young men and young women who have played on the All-Star teams, the experience has been one they will always remember participation in a classic that helped guide their path from youthful exuberance to productive maturity. Through all the changes, the past goes on to the future. And as these young Hoosiers prepare for their all-star performance, the essence of the game still remains the same and is best summed up in these immortal words of Tony Hinkle. <laughs> oh, that's very simple. Very Ladies and gentlemen, that short video, go ahead. You never, you never tire of looking at artistry like that. That short video takes a quick look back at some very special people and leads us into the concluding portion of our program this evening. Over the years, more than 500 Indiana boys have worn the All-Star uniform. All were great players or they wouldn't have been named All-Stars. But with such an array of talent, the question always comes up. If you were putting a team together and you could pick any 10 of all those players, who are the 10 you'd pick for your team? That's the question that the Indianapolis Star asked its readers this uh, past spring. And here to tell us what happened is Pat Aikman, the game director for Indiana and the promotion coordinator for the Indianapolis Star. Pat? Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> Joe, as I was listening to your speech, you mentioned several times all the things you remembered that night in Moscow on the way home. It must have been a hell of a long commute. I, uh, as I was sitting there talking to Bobby Plump about the Dream Team, he said to me he'd like to have a recount. He doesn't know, and I'm glad to tell him at this time, that if there'd been about 40 more votes for Bobby Plump, he would not have been number one man on the second team, but he would have been on the dream team. So, Bobby, that should make you feel better. But I think I really know what Hoosier hysteria is because this morning, as we were running around our office madly trying to do things and get ready for tonight and tomorrow, uh, we had a call from Terre Haute, Indiana, 
a breathless call. A lady said she was just going into labor. She had tickets for the game tomorrow. She was not going to be able to make it to the game, but they had a TV in the delivery room, and she wondered what channel the game would be on. I think that's real commitment. Well, the, as I said, the first all-star team was selected by a popular ballot in the Indianapolis Star. The ballot ran for several days, about 15 days, and they printed the results each morning in the newspaper the following morning that, that the ballots were due. Don Frazier, uh, who was a former resident of Greencastle, which is where I live now, was telling me this winter as we were talking about what we were going to do here tonight, he said, you know, we were so excited, I would run down to the inner urban station every morning and get the star and see how I was doing on the dream team. Well, the 39 team was selected by popular ballot, and we thought it would be a lot of fun this year to stimulate conversation at barber shops and beauty shops and perhaps cause a little confusion, strife uh, on the domestic scene, that we would let the public select, invite the public to select a dream team of the 537 boys who had been all-stars in the last 50 years, select that dream team and see what we came up with. The ballots appeared in the Indianapolis Star from April 16th until May the 8th. The ballot contained 537 names of all-stars chosen during 50 years. We were, ask, we were asking you to choose 10. As I said, it caused a, a lot of consternation, a lot of conversation on golf courses. A lot of people told me that j this is really an interesting uh, uh, competition, contest. Uh, we're, we're enjoying it. Bob uh, Collins, the sports editor of the Indianapolis Star, narrowed his list of 10 to a definitive 22. And some of you may have read that in the paper. Well, at any rate, when the ballots were all in, we had 32,000 votes, and they came from 25 states. Uh, it really gave me a lot of pleasure that the Indianapolis Star circulates all over the United States like that, because they were all original ballots. We had them from New York, Mississippi, uh, New Jersey, Washington. We had one from Senator Richard Luger. I won't divulge his uh, selection. But we could have had any one of 100 combinations for this 10-man dream team. Uh, we couldn't go wrong. There were a lot of winners. But the fans have spoken, you have spoken, and tonight it's a pleasure to report the team that you have selected, and I believe Jim Pulaski is going to announce their names, and we will make a presentation to them. Right you are, right you are Pat. As we call your name, members of the team, will you please rise, and we'll pick you up with the spotlight, and then come up here on the stage, and we'll finish up with a presentation to you. From Indianapolis Washington High School, Billy Keller, 1965. Billy lives in Noblesville, Indiana with his wife Joyce. He's basketball camp director for the Indiana Pacer Basketball Camp and Billy Keller Basketball Camps. He has two stepchildren, Jill and Jeannie, and enjoys fishing and jogging. Billy Keller. From Indianapolis Manual, Tom Ben Arsdale, 1961. Tom lives in Paradise Valley, Arizona. He's a real estate broker. He is married to Kathy. They have three children, and he enjoys fishing and golf. Some guys sit way in the back of the room so they can take a longer walk up here. So they have four children, Andrea, Elizabeth, Genevieve, and Ashley. He's a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He enjoys bass fishing. From Kokomo, Jimmy Rail, 1959. Jimmy still resides in Kokomo. He's an account representative for the Xerox Corporation. His wife's name is Nancy. They have four children, Jim, Tom, Ginger, and Tim. And he enjoys sports in general. From Newcastle, Steve Alford, 1983. Steve Alford is married. He's a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and he enjoys golf. Steve taught us all how to keep our hair looking neat, even under the most strenuous athletic competition. From Lebanon, Rick Mount, 1966. Rick is now a salesman. His wife's name is Donna. 
They have a son, Richmount, who's a member of the 1989 All-Star Team. He enjoys fishing and hunting. I have a question of our statisticians down here in front. Is this the first father-son combination in the Indiana All-Star Team? It's not, okay. From Springs Valley, Larry Bird, 1974. I don't believe Larry's here this evening, is he? From Indianapolis, George Washington, George McGinnis, 1969. George is a resident of Indianapolis. He's vice president of marketing at USA Title. His wife's name is Linda. They have one son and he enjoys golf. And the leading vote getter, 1956, Indianapolis Christmas Addicts, the golden anniversary, Mr. Basketball, the big O, Oscar Robertson. Oscar lives in Cincinnati, Ohio. President Orkham Incorporated. His wife's name is Yvonne, has three children, Shana, Tia, and Mary. Oscar Robertson. Fellas want to get close together there so they can get a picture of you, thank you. While they're taking that picture, ladies and gentlemen, it's impossible to relive all the memories of 50 years of anything, especially something as big as basketball in the state of Indiana. You can't do justice to everybody or everything. This evening, we've tried to hit just some of the high spots, and we hope that somewhere along the line, we've touched something that brings back fond memories for you. Many of us believe wholeheartedly that Indiana is basketball, and until somebody comes along and proves otherwise to us, we're going to keep on believing it. And I'll guarantee you this, there's no other state in this country that has ever done anything like what has taken place here tonight, and as far as we know, it ain't ever going to take place in any other state. This is only in Indiana that you find something like this, a celebration of 50 years of all-star history. Before we conclude, I'm asking everybody, the all-stars again, the former all-stars, the coaches, please come back up front for your pictures so we can get those afterward. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been a marvelous audience. Thank you very much for being here with us. We hope to see you tomorrow at Market Square Arena. If you can't make it, the games are on TTV Channel 4, both the girls' and boys' games. And now what we're asking the Dream Team to do, if you gentlemen will, lead out of this hall, the 1989 Boys and Girls All-Stars, lead them out the hall, and folks, let's let these Dream Team people and the All-Stars of today know how you feel about them and wish those All-Stars a victory tomorrow in both their games against Kentucky. Thanks again for being a great audience. Have a safe trip home.